So here I am with Ben Reed from the TV Video Music Group, and uh, Windows 7 is now available, which we're super excited about, and you're going to talk about what your Xbox 360 and Windows 7 can do together, correct? That's, that's right, yes. Well, let's get right into it. What can I do with it? Uh, well, most people um, uh, might be surprised to hear that built into every single one of the Xbox 360s that are out there, you know, whatever, 30-something million, um, they have this technology called Extender for Windows Media Center. Um, and by hooking that up to their Windows 7 PC, they can actually access all of their um, recorded television that's been recorded on that PC, their pictures, their music, and their videos as well. Now, how do you actually physically hook that up? Well, um, if you already have an Xbox Live subscription, and therefore your Xbox 360 is connected to the internet, you probably have everything you already need. Um, you just need a, a home network, so a, a router, um, and just hook that up to your Xbox and then the other end up to your PC. Um, and then you use an eight-digit code which automatically shows up to associate the two together and you're away. Well, let's take a look at actually Windows 7. I'm going to pop that up because I want sure. you to come walk me through some of the things that you can actually do on Windows 7. Now, is there anything different that you can do on Windows 7 that you couldn't do on Vista? What are the improvements? Um, there's a bunch of things. Really, um, it's based on feedback we had from uh, customers and also based on some telemetry uh, that we get from Windows Vista users. Um, but basically, customers t the, the feedback that we had boiled down into three areas. Um, customers told us that they wanted it to uh, simplify everyday tasks. Um, work the way they wanted and make new things possible. And as it relates to Windows Media Center, we're going to focus on the make th new things possible area. Um, and really, um, by adding an inexpensive USB TV tuner to your Windows 7 PC, you can actually turn your PC into a TV and DVR. So you can uh, record your, PC, yeah, your, your TV on your PC. And then using your Xbox 360, access it in other rooms. So like we have here, um, I could you know, have my recorded TV on this PC here on my, well, Windows 7, and then using my Xbox 360, access it in another room. And I just want to clarify, too, that we're actually in your house. That's and right. so you aren't somebody that doesn't practice what you preach. <laughs> this is your house, and you've set it all up. We have That's a giant right. projector and all that kind of stuff. So all right, so as we bring up Win7, you're going to take us through some of the things. You mentioned uh, streaming live TV, yeah. streaming some of your movies, some of your videos. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your favorite feature? Um, what, the thing that I really like about it is it's just so easy to find the TV shows and movies you care about. So here if we go over to the guide, um, you can see some of the enhancements we've made in Windows 7. For example, uh, particular shows are color-coded based on the type of um, show it is, whether it's um, a movie or it's um, uh, news or sports. Um, I can also create my own guide listings. You know, as people have more and more uh, TV channels these days, getting access to the things quickly is something that uh, is really going to help. So you can create your own or use some of the predefined uh, ones built in here. Um, even going through the guide, let's say I want to find something that's on on Friday evening, I just hold down this and uh, the button and it goes through uh, a feature we call Turbo Scroll all the way to Friday evening, I let go and then it jumps to Friday evening. And then just like a regular DVR, I could select it and record it or record the whole series if I wanted to. Um, it's not just with TV though, the same thing happens with movies. If I go to um, the movie guide here, I can see all the top rated movies that are on in the next two weeks. Um, let's look at this one here and I'll just select it. I can even go over, uh, find similar movies um, that may not even be in the guide. Here's one that's not in the guide. If I select that, I can set it up so that it records it in the future. So if at any point in time it shows up in the guide, it's there and I don't even have to go in. And, and then knowing when that comes up, a new uh, thing that shows up here is, this is a Windows 7 gadget for the desktop. And this shows you the latest uh, recorded television. So let's say I had set up that recording and in the future it did come up, it would show me here the latest recorded television and I could just um, go straight from there to watching that show. Or I could use one of the jump list features. This is a new feature in Windows 7 called jump lists. Just off the start menu, you can see um, the most recently recorded TV or frequently accessed things and just simply select those and it'll launch Windows Media Center and go straight to it. How has your relationship been with the Xbox 360? Like, why even give this the ability to be able to plug into your Xbox 360 and well, it's, it's about being uh, able to do things in different places. Um, here in this example, I'm using a laptop, but in my house I have a PC in another room um, which has multiple TV tuners connected to it. I actually have four because in Windows 7 we've increased the number of TV tuners you can have. And my cable, my cable service comes into those tuners and then whenever something needs to be recorded in the house, it gets recorded on that PC. And then I actually have several Xbox 360s, one in this room, but I have one in the bedroom and of another one <laughs> elsewhere. And so um, 
using those, I can access the same thing or I can access a different thing. I could even start watching a TV program in this room and let's say I need to go off and do something else, I could finish watching it in another room and pick it up where I left off. So can you take me through the steps of how you actually set it up? Sure. Um, so if you have your Xbox 360 turned on, when you start Windows 7, assuming they're on the same home network, you'll actually get a pop-up that displays and says, you know, I've noticed you have an ex an extender for Windows Media Center, would you like to set it up now? And you say yes, and it'll give you an eight-digit code on the Xbox. You then come to the PC, type that eight-digit code in, and then it makes the association. Now, if that eight-digit code doesn't show up, or if it doesn't give you the pop-up, rather, to show you, or to say, do you want to set it up, you just come down here to Tasks, select Add Extender, uh, click on Next, and then type in the eight-digit code, and then it's the same. And that's all you have to do. Once you do that, you are good to go. That's right. And then anytime you've got your Windows 7 PC on and you start your Xbox 360 and then under My Xbox, go over to the right, uh, and this is in the new dashboard, okay. um, go over to the right to uh, Windows Media Center and select it. Or if you have an Xbox 360 remote like this one, you can press the, uh, the Windows Media Center button. You can actually t um, set up your Xbox 360 to start in Windows Media Center straight away as well from the settings. So you have to keep your PC on, though, correct, in order to make any of it Yes, work. you will You will need your PC on. Uh, there is actually a way you can have it so that um, it'll wake up if the uh, Xbox 360 turns on and you request it to start Windows Media Center. Wake up! That's right. <laughs> the, the power management settings, you can do that. Okay, perfect. And I actually have a couple of questions from some of our Channel 9 uh, forum members. This one says, are you planning to support Windows 7 Play 2 feature on the 360? If so, when will this happen? And this is from Baz. Um, so, um, Baz, the answer is yes. The support's right there now. It has been since the Windows 7 beta. It was in the release candidate and it is in the RTM as well. And I can show you here how that works. Why don't we go ahead and do that? Yeah. yeah. So with Play 2, um, basically it allows you to use your Windows 7 PC as a remote control to play to another device, like in this case, the Xbox 360. Um, imagine this scenario. Let's say you just came over to my house, Dina, and you brought your laptop with you and you just got a bunch of vacation photos on there. Well, we could sit around and watch them on this screen, which would be great, but let's say we had a group of people here. We wouldn't be able, or rather, that wouldn't be the best way to do it, especially when I have a big screen and an Xbox 360. So all I need to do is give you access to my home network, which is made easier with something called home group in Windows 7 and then once you're on the network you simply go to the actual thing that you want to show so in this case let's say we um, go to the pictures um, here's some from your trip to Europe or whatever it is uh, you right click on the actual picture and you go to a new menu that's right here that says play to you select that and then you'll see the Xbox 360 listed right here and you select that and it would come up on the big screen there you go Baz you're Questions have been answered. The next one comes from Duncan MA. Are there any changes or improvements around the Media Center extender functionality and the streaming of content from Windows Media Player in Windows 7? Um, so yeah, there's, um, there are some uh, changes, there are some enhancements, some things that we've noticed here um, in terms of when you skip through um, uh, some of the shows, it's actually a lot faster. Uh, the menus just appear um, better, and all of the enhancements that we made to Windows Media Center on the PC show up on the Xbox 360 automatically. So if you are upgrading or if you added your Xbox 360 to a Windows 7 PC, you'd see those changes as well. And Andy C says, uh, will your 360 saves ever be backed up on your home server? I think Andy lost all of his <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> well, Andy, um, I, uh, you know, there are, there are always lots of things that we're working on. Um, I can't say that that's something that's definitely going to be in a future version, um, but we'll definitely uh, uh, share your feedback with the team, and you know, it'll uh, be assessed based on all the other types of features and requests that we have. Is there anything coming down the pipeline in the future that you want to share with us or you can talk about? Um, nothing particular that's uh, coming up in the future, but there's a lot of things that we haven't talked about that a lot of people might not realize are actually included with Windows 7 and Windows Media Center. Um, for example, we added a lot of support for additional TV standards, um, not just here in the US, but uh, in, in other countries. Um, there were some enhancements we made to the support for the digital cable experiences in Windows Media Center. For example, the ability to take more of the recording tele recorded television programs on on portable devices or on other PCs. Um, so there's certainly some things to check out that people might not already know about. Is there a place that you can send people that want a little bit more information about? Absolutely, windowsmediacenter.com. There you go, Windows Media. Ben, thank you so much. Thank you. Nice theater. Can I come over and like watch a movie or something? <laughs> sure. Awesome.